Hello, this is Scarlet and Rage Podcast. I am Michael, and it is good to be coming to you today. Of course, Jay, a.k.a. Rage, is with me. Uh, But there's not going to be a lot of rage on this episode. This is, um, strangely enough, this is more of a celebratory episode. And I know that you are looking at two unicorns. You were looking at two Ohio State fans that are celebrating a Michigan semifinal win. We'll get to it more later, but Michigan fans, Michigan football program, congratulations. You knocked out the king. You're not the champ yet. You still got another bout to go, but you knocked out the king of college football. And uh, that is a tremendous achievement as a program. And as much as I wish it was the Buckeyes who was doing it the way that we did in 2014 when we knocked off Bama, I am uh, am still glad to see a Big Ten team represent Midwest football and take it to the best that the South has to offer and beat them straight up on the field. And that's that's exactly what you did. And so we're going to get into that. But, you know, before we kind of – get into that uh you know we've had the holiday since our last episode jay uh, i'm assuming everything went well for you uh in the you know over the holiday very very busy time michael very very busy time in uh my household and my new household and stuff uh yeah a lot going on here um yeah you know last episode you know that we recorded was uh very somber and depressing yeah uh, but again this is this is a celebratory episode because, yeah. again, this is an Ohio State podcast, but second most for a Big Ten podcast. Yeah. You want the Big Ten to do well because when the Big Ten does well, Ohio State does well. So that's, right. that's why we're doing this Rose Bowl recap, and we're going to be Michigan fans uh, in next week too. Um, Michael, how was your Christmas break in New Year? Do you have anything uh, it was, going it, on? It was, it was good. You know, it was hectic. I was traveling, and so it's that's always uh, challenging. But mm-hmm. it was good. I uh, had a nice trip, but, you know, glad to, glad to be back. And, um, you know, uh, I tell you what, Jay, I am um, – I'll start it off by saying I picked I've, – I've got my score written down right here. I yeah. picked you guys to lose Michigan. Uh, 2419 Bama fans. I, if you're any of you are watching, I picked you to win 2419. Um, I was wrong, and I freely said when I picked that score, I said, I think Alabama's gonna win, but I hope I am wrong, and I was wrong, and I admit it. I underestimated Michigan. I looked at the 247 rankings, I said, Alabama is number one, Michigan is number 14. There's no way they can overcome that talent deficit. It's it's just I just don't see it happening. And you did. And and I mean, not only that, you showed that that team on the field did not look like the number 14th most talented team in the country. So somehow Jim Harbaugh has found a formula to defy the recruiting rankings, unlike anybody in the history of the college football playoff. Michael, I couldn't agree more. I also picked Alabama to win, but I made it very clear that I wanted Michigan to win. I'm very excited that Michigan won. Um, And I will say that there was a pathway to victory for Michigan. If, you know, I kind of broke the game down a couple weeks ago and did our Rose Bowl preview, and Michigan did pretty much exactly everything that I would have wanted them to do. But, man, what a game. What a game. Just unbelievable win and redemption for a Big Ten that have been yeah. one and four heading into this matchup. But you know yeah. what? You know what, Michael? We won the only game of real importance. Yeah. And the only one that was going to give respect to this conference back. Yeah. And this almost makes up for the Big Ten's failures over the last nine seasons against the SEC. <laughs> almost. But yeah. we need one or two or more of these CFP games to completely to win. Yeah. You need to the, win to flip the script, but it's a start. Um, this was the, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I you know, I really thought this was gonna go miserable, I will say, to start it off after McCarthy's almost interception. I mean, it was an interception, but um Caleb Downs, uh thankfully Caleb Downs was out of bounds first which wiped it out um 
where JJ was throwing the ball, I have no freaking clue. But just dumb that he, you know, that was just a dumb throw. He got away with one. Uh, the guy definitely redeemed himself, though. Through, you know, he threw some absolute pinpoint uh, passes with uh, great accuracy. Um, just wish there were more deep throws involved in the Michigan passing game. Um, but yeah, what did you think at the beginning of the game with, like, you know, his first interception? I mean, there were so many key moments. But well, I'll, I'll say first off, as an Ohio State fan, with some of the controversies that we have had in these uh, semifinal games, and I am not one. Mm -hmm. to make excuses and say, well, we lost this game because of this call or because of that call. So that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is we have had a series of calls. Um, the Sean Wade targeting call, the uh, fumble recovery against Clemson, both in that 2019 Clemson game. We had uh, obviously the, uh, the targeting uh, call that was reversed in the Georgia game. We had the First, the the uh, fourth down stop where Ohio State stopped Georgia on fourth down, and that essentially was the ball game, uh, only to immediately go to commercial break, come back, and find out that they had given Brock Bowers the spot without really even showing us how that happened. And so, uh, you know, being on the wrong side of, of some of those extremely close calls in big games, and it just kind of seems like the Big Ten has that uh, – uh, luck in general, uh, I was fully expecting them to uphold the interception, even though his foot clearly was out of bounds <laughs> because uh, earlier <clears throat> in the day, an LSU receiver had caught a ball where his foot was clearly two or three inches uh, over the line. I mean, it was just right there for everybody to see, um, and they upheld it as a touchdown. So I fully expected them to uh, you know, to uphold that. And when they didn't, I, I honestly, I was like, wow, uh, I'm a, I, I'm surprised something went a big team tens way in a big game on one of these kind of the referees can do whatever they want calls. And uh, I think it was the right call, but it, I, I was just surprised that uh, it, it, it did end up going Michigan's way. And that, I mean, that was, that was huge. That, that set the tone for Michigan to be able to have success by getting that overturned. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of scary considering, I mean, Michigan did, did turn it over again the first yeah. quarter, so it kind of yeah. offset it. But, man, oh, man, just so many key moments in this game, like beginning with, like, you know, the fourth and two in the fourth quarter with, like, I don't know. I don't even know how much time was left, but it was for the game. Uh, mm -hmm. It was completion to Blake Corum in the flat. And, by the way, I don't think anybody's pointing this out, but an Alabama defender was like inches away from deflecting that. I mean, like, I swear, like, you know, it was kind of like Zach Harrison against Georgia on their game winning drive. Like it looked like, you know, nobody really mentions it on the replay, how close Zach Harrison got. Nobody really mentions in this pot. Or, I mean, nobody's mentioned on any podcast or even on live TV that Alabama was inches away, or maybe it just went right by the football. I don't know from deflecting that pass. And like the game was over after that. Um, Rod Moore tackling Jalen Milrow in overtime. That was one of the best open field tackles I've seen. Like Alex Sonic Styles couldn't make that tackle in the best of his dreams. Uh, yeah. Um, the third quarter was pretty scary because Alabama was starting to take momentum. Michigan really wasn't doing much of anything on offense and Alabama was starting to run the ball. Um, honestly, if, if Michigan doesn't completely fuck up special teams, they win this game by two touchdowns. You know, um, another, uh, yeah, I, I agree. And, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I'm going to go down a little rabbit hole here for just a second. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Roman uh, Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, that huge catch he made late in the game where he was fully Ooh, extended yeah. fingertips. Mm -hmm. An Alabama defender ever so slightly tipped that ball at the line of scrimmage. If that Alabama defender had not have tipped that ball, it very well could have sailed over the reach of Roman Wilson, that little tip could have been what slowed it down enough to, to, to give him the ability to, to catch it. And, and when I saw that, I just said, you know, the, the Al Pacino uh, speech from any given Sunday came in my mind about it's a game of inches. And it really is. I, and I mean, you know, and, and Michigan was getting those inches. It was, uh, it's like Al Pacino said, he said, it's a game of inches. He said, it's an inch here. That's a great football speech. He said, it's an inch there, you know, but you add them all up. 
And it's the difference between winning and losing, between living and dying. And so, you know, <laughs> at, at the at the end of the day. That was a good the, Al Pacino impression. The, at the end of the day, the inches went Michigan's way. Yeah, absolute game of inches and hot take. I don't know if any, but I don't know why any given Sunday is like taken as like the best football movie. I personally think that movie sucks. And I don't think it's a great. Take. I don't think it's a great football movie. I think that's a great speech. I think that's okay. a great job of acting, and that's a great written speech uh, during that particular part. But no, I don't think it's a great football movie at all. Yeah, off topic. Friday Night Lights from two thousand four, the high school movie. That was the best football movie ever made. I don't I, think I haven't, that's. I haven't seen that. Okay, best football ever movie. Best football movie ever made. You need to watch it. Okay. Uh, Varsity Blues is probably number two. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then the program. The program was really good too. Yeah. Our Friday Night Lights is number one with Billy Bob Thornton. Um, he was the head coach in the movie. Th this is what Scarlet and Rage podcast looks like when there's joy, when there's hope. And and, and some people would say, "What is the matter with you two that you know Michigan winning?" brought you joy and hope what is the matter with you we just got beat by michigan 30 yeah. to 24 this just made us look better michigan just elevated the ohio state university mm -hmm. it, 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 it 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 gave us a little more credibility just like when ohio state wins the national championship in 2014 it gives credibility to the big 10 the fact that there's a second program that's now showing that it can win playoff games and maybe we'll find out in a couple of weeks win a national championship that is a good thing for the big 10 we want the best to be in the big 10 we want the 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 best of the best to be in the big 10 so that we are ready to uh, face the best that the South has to offer when that time comes. And, and boy, in, in this case, it, it hasn't happened often. And, and here's the thing. It's not, it's not just the, the Big Ten. It's anybody. Almost nobody beats the SEC in the playoffs. I mean, do you realize that? I mean, you know, Ohio, oh, yeah. State, Ohio State and Clemson are the only teams that have beat the SEC in the playoffs until Michigan yesterday. And Clemson's a team from the southeast. Yeah, and Cle Clemson's another team from the south. So right. it, it's not even really like there's much difference there. No, I mean, as Ohio State was the only one. And yep. uh, two things I'm taking from that. Number one, Michigan is really the only team in the Big Ten that's competing at this level. Ohio State surely isn't. They're no, not even not close. Now. No, yeah. not even close. Ohio State's taking a couple steps back. And then number two, now, again, like I said earlier, we need a couple more of these wins to really tip the scales and even things out. But yeah. hopefully this is the start of Midwest players starting to come back to the Big Ten. Yeah. Because Alabama has two – I mean, we mentioned this in the Rose Bowl preview. But Alabama's two starting offensive tackles are five stars from the Midwest. Yeah. There is absolutely no fucking reason players like that should be going down to fucking Alabama – out in the middle of nowhere in the deep south where it's hot and humid and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like you lived in Alabama, Michael. Like, what the fuck is there? It's awful. I well let, let me let me rephrase that. Okay. To all of our Alabama friends. Mm -hmm. It's not my cup of tea. Okay. So a kid from the Midwest. Now I, I get it. There, there's some nice things about it. There's some very nice people in Alabama. You have a wonderful state, Alabama. Uh, you really do, but it's not my cup of tea. And probably if many of you Alabamians came up here to Ohio, uh, it probably wouldn't be your cup of tea. And that's fine. That's why we can all choose to live where we want to live. But a kid growing up in the Midwest, it's difficult for me to believe that he would just really love living in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, it's, I mean, you know, Southern culture and Midwestern culture is very different. And me living in both places, when they were flashing the Alabama fans and when they were flashing the Michigan fans, I was seeing that difference between the Midwestern and the Southern culture. And you know what? Uh, I, that was, uh, I, you know, my son, he was asking me, he was like, dad, why are you rooting for Michigan? And I said, you don't get it yet. I said, Michigan is trying to save a, 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 a um, respect for the, for the Midwestern region. And that's exactly what they did. They, I mean, they, they, they saved our butts. Ohio State crapped the bed. Penn State crapped the bed. Uh, Wisconsin crapped the bed. 
Iowa crap the bed, but nobody's really going to remember those. What people are going to remember is that a Big Ten team, in this case, Michigan, beat Alabama. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I could. you said that as well as I could have ever said it. Probably much better. You're much more uh, articulate than I am with your explanations on things, Michael. So props to you there. Um, I, and I'm, by the way, I am now living in SEC country. I have crossed the border. I'm no longer in North Carolina. I'm in South Carolina, Michael. You're in SEC so now country, yeah. I, I am in fully in SEC country now. Fully. Like, I was in ACC country. Now I'm in SEC country. You know what? A good friend of mine from Alabama, he texted me uh, today and we were texting. He's not from Alabama. I'm sorry. He lives in Louisiana, but he's a huge Alabama fan. Been an Alabama fan his whole life. He's about 45 years old. And he um, he, te- he he was texting with me. And you know, he's a realistic fan. He's not like a, a you know an idiot. And you know, he said they beat us. He said they they flat beat us. He mm-hmm. said we didn't lose the turnover. You know, it's not like we lost the turnover battle. Um, it's not. He said actually they probably made more mistakes than we did. Oh he yeah. Said, he said they just flat out beat us. <laughs> I said yeah, that's that's what happened. Like there's no other way around it. So before we get into like the analytics of this game, I just want to point out a player. And that player is Blake Corum. Mm-hmm. That dude is just a warrior. Like you could like yeah. have warrior on a sign and below it, like the the portrait of like a person representing warrior would be Blake Corum. I, under, I, under, I underestimated him. So did I before Ohio State and Michigan played. But after the Ohio State Michigan game, I fully gave him his props and said he's much better than Travion Henderson. Do you know what um, this? You know what this is like, Jay? Do you, do you remember that goofy movie Anchorman? I actually with, with, with only Will saw the clips of it. I don't like Will Ferrell, man. I think okay. he, I don't think he's very funny. Okay, he's you, great in small bits, okay, but as you, a lead, he sucks. Do you like Vince Vaughn? I do like Vince Vaughn. Okay, well, there's this part in Anchorman where Vince Vaughn is like a rival, you know, uh, um, newsman. And so, you know, in Anchorman 1, they're bitter rivals. And then in Anchorman 2, Vince Vaughn shows up to, uh, you know, uh, Will Ferrell's character's defense. And he's basically going to, like, save Will Ferrell's character. Mm -hmm. And he says to him, you know, his character is Ron Burgundy. And he says, you know, he says, Ron Burgundy, I don't like you, but damn it. Do I respect you? <laughs> and, <laughs> that's that's kind of what it's like with 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 this Michigan team. Is I respect the hell out of what I saw uh, on the field uh, last night. I really do. I'm oh, not going to eat. Yeah. I'm not going to eat this freaking banana right now. I'm getting carried away with myself. You know, I'm I'm just excited that a Big Ten team toppled uh, the you know the SEC. Well, I will say this. We, like you said, we're unicorns. I would say about 92, 93% of Ohio State fans were cheering for Alabama yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Even though the SEC had been skull dragging the Big yeah. Ten. It, it, Big it, Ten it, is so it, fucking <laughs> bad outside of Michigan, it's not even funny. <laughs> Maryland, like, was holding that they were carrying the conference. Yeah, Maryland the carried the torch a little bit. Auburn, yeah. man. I really thought Iowa was going to do something yeah. against Tennessee because Tennessee had so many opt outs. Iowa no. loses 35 to fucking nothing. Iowa against really Tennessee's backups. Yeah, Iowa really crapped the bet. I mean, I, they I, did. I had, uh, Wisconsin uh, choked. They uh, they should have won and they lost. I even told some SEC friends of mine, I said, I think Iowa might beat them. Oh boy. Jeez. Never bet. Oh on yeah. Iowa. Oh yeah. But continuing on with Blake Corum, he is everything you want in a running back. Mm-hmm. He has amazing vision which is something you either have or you don't. It cannot be taught. His patience and ability to read where to go is uncanny, but he Mm -hmm. also has the power and leg drive to be able to finish runs and move the pile. He's really a complete back. He's not going to be a first-round NFL guy because he's just, I don't, I think he's only like 5'9". But, I mean, not that that matters as much, but. But the NFL only takes, you know, it, the, the game has changed so much in the NFL. I mean, it's not that he couldn't have been a first run mm-hmm. NFL back like 20 years ago, but, you know, the game has changed so much that unless you're one of those really 
explosive backs that can, you know, catch passes out of the backfield and, 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 you know, really have that top end speed. They just don't take those, you know, any other kind of back in the first round hardly anymore. But no. I, mean, I, I think he, you know, depending on his 40 time, I think he could go somewhere in the second. What do you think? Yeah, I was actually about to say yeah. that. I think he's going to go in the second round. Yeah. Um, probably mid to late second round. He's not going to be a first round pick, but man, being yeah. a second round pick is fucking awesome, man. Derrick yeah, Henry was for, a second round pick. For running back. I mean, think about it. J.K. Dobbins was a second round pick, and he was a darn good back. Yeah, he was. I think he's been yeah. okay in the NFL, but injury prone. But Derrick Henry was a second round pick. Yeah. yeah. The most talented running back of all time. Yes, I yeah. said it. Derrick Henry's the most talented running back of all time. Um, yeah, Alabama fans. I, I love Derrick Henry. He's a beast. Um, so anywho, Michael, let's start out and break this game down position by position best we can. So starting out, I think we would both agree about this is first and foremost, Michigan's lines on both sides of the ball controlled the game. They didn't dominate, dominate, but they controlled the yeah. game. Yeah. especially Michigan's defensive line. Like yeah. I pointed this player out before Kenneth Grant, the big thoroughbred behemoth and Mason Graham absolutely dominated Michigan's or no, not Michigan. They dominated Alabama's interior. And then Braden McGregor, who's their defensive end. Mm -hmm. He looked like Nick Bosa 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. Their defensive line was their monsters. Did you happen to notice the, like, the, the damage uh, they were doing? Oh man, the, their defensive tackles were ferocious. I mean, they were they were forced to reckon with. So, um, you know, we'll get to that later. But that's why I was, and I don't know. There's a lot of uh, a lot of different things out there about the play call, but that's why I was. I said, man, that was a I was a bold choice there, Tommy Reese, to run right at the strength of the Michigan defense with the game on the line at fourth and two. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that later because I was going to say that wasn't the design. That was not the design of that yeah, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, continuing on with the lines. You know what really, really, really surprised me? And I was completely wrong on this. This was the thing I was most wrong about. And do you know what that was, Michael? What? Michigan's pass protection was actually very surprisingly very good. It was. Like, very good. Yeah. I mean, J.J. had a little pressure, and he had to move around and evade a little bit, and he has that ability, unlike Kyle McCord did this year. So McCord would have been a sitting duck on several of those plays that J.J. was able to maneuver around and, and you know, uh, at least extend the play. Whether he completed the pass or not, he didn't end up taking a sack on some of those. But, but yeah, you're right. The protection overall was was solid. It was more than solid. I could not believe. They could block Alabama after not being able to block Penn State in pass protection, but they did. Because you remember the Penn State game when Michigan actually tried throwing the ball at the beginning? Do you remember that game? Well, yeah. I mean, I think it just – I think the only way I know how to uh, that reconcile that is one of two things. Either uh, Alabama just doesn't have an edge rusher like – uh, you know, like Penn State. The, I mean, the guy's going to be a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, either Alabama just doesn't have an edge rusher like that, or maybe their tackle was banged up that day and just wasn't on his A game. I don't know. I mean, what you know, one of the one of the two. But yeah, I don't. You know, they mm -hmm. certainly didn't have problems with with Alabama's ends the way that they did with uh, with Penn State. Well, I believe the two Michigan offensive tackles, I believe they're Trent Jones and Ladarius Henderson. Let me know if that's right or wrong, Michigan fans, in the mm -hmm. comments below. Um, they more than held their own because, like you said, you weren't sure if Alabama has one of those edge rushers. They do. And I think he was probably better than anybody Penn State had. Mm. Um, that's Dallas Turner. Dallas mm. Turner, I don't remember ever seeing him make any plays in this game, pass yeah. rushing-wise. I know he made tackles and stuff, but I don't think he ever really caused any havoc in the backfield. Yeah, and I, mean, I tell you this, we, we won't talk about it uh, much, about Ohio State much, because there's just not much to talk about with that team. But uh, yeah, Man, I'm both, so pissed off at them still. Both teams, uh, both Michigan and Alabama, I saw significantly better linebacker play and just better, oh, faster yeah. athletes at linebacker on both of those teams than I did than you know than we than we have at Ohio State. Yeah, well, they have like they have some length and speed there. Although 
I mean, I'm not trying to get off topic on Ohio State. I've already ripped into them <laughs> enough. But, like, C.J. Hicks is one of those guys that would be like, okay, that's an Alabama player. And he looks so lost in the sauce against Missouri. But at the same time, it's like, well, he hasn't fucking played at all. What do you expect them to do? Go in the game cold? He hasn't played all season? And be able to make plays against a mobile quarterback in Brady that's Cook? True. Like, that's true. I mean, he was he was set up to fail. Just yeah, the way he really that, was. Uh, you know, so hopefully, hopefully, there's more there than what we saw. But anywho, um, Alabama. I don't believe. Now, I, I didn't look at the stats. I'm going to look at them here in a second. But I don't think they sacked McCarthy one time, and that is just crazy. Crazy good for Michigan, but like crazy surprising for Alabama. Yeah, and my Alabama friend. He texted me in the first half and he said, he said, were they sacking you guys like this? He was like, were they just shredding your offensive line like this? And I was just going by memory. And I said, uh, I don't think this bad, you know, they were definitely getting some pressure against us, but they didn't, they didn't get near as much pressure against the Buckeyes as they did Alabama the other night. Did they Jay? I mean, how many times did they sack McCord? Two, I don't know. Three, I, I, I actually don't know how many times they sacked McCord. That's actually a really good question. Well, um, they, sa- they sacked Bama, what, six or seven times? Milrow, six or seven times? Mm, At least six times. Six, six times. times, yeah. Six times, yeah. yeah no, I, so Dallas Turner was registered with a, a sack. I don't remember when that was. So I'm looking at it right now. Dallas okay. Turner did have one sack. I don't know when the hell that mm. was. It must have been early in the game. And okay. I completely forgot about it. But like later on in the game, they weren't getting any pressure at all. No, yeah. no. Yeah. So like, and then Michigan, yeah, let's look at the stats real quick. Sacks wise, they they did have six against uh, Alabama, which is just, you know, I, I mean, again, Alabama, in my opinion, had the best offensive line in the country with a mobile quarterback. But They're- Michigan, again, I'll get into this later, but. They did exactly what I would like what I told them to do. And you guys can go back and look at the Rose Bowl preview. I said mm-hmm. exactly what Michigan needed to do. But yeah, Michigan only sacked Ohio State once, but I wasn't sure that they brought the same amount of blitzes against Ohio State. I don't think they, they did. did, but I mean they're mm-hmm. they're they didn't have to, but I mean their defense was uh was ferocious against Alabama. I mean it was uh it was exactly the way it should have been played. Yeah. Honestly, they could yeah. not have done anything better. Um mm-hmm. Skill positions for both sides of the ball. Um, Michigan was better. They were better at the skill positions in Alabama. Um, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised because I knew Michigan's secondary could cover these guys. I knew they could. I just didn't expect their wide receivers, Michigan's wide receivers, to create as much separation as they did. Roman Wilson and Tyler Morris were beasts, and they both showed uh, a lot of speed. Alabama fans remember I said, I think Michigan could get you in the secondary. And I remember a lot of people getting really upset, like, oh, this is the best secondary. And the, this, Bama that, and the, the Bama fans. Yeah, fan. the Alabama fans. Yeah, they were you guys, coming You guys said your YouTube secondary coming. was unstoppable. Well, J.J. had 221, and let me tell you, J.J. was the difference because J.J. had 221, Milrow had 116, and the, the final numbers for the game were what, Jay, like, like 336 to 271 or something like that? Yeah, it was uh, like 350 it, to 270 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, as far as total yeah. yards, some, something like that. So, I mean, J.J. was the difference. J.J. being able to throw the ball some, mm-hmm. enough to keep Alabama honest, that was the difference in the game. Alabama fans, and I said it. I said it, you know, a couple weeks ago. I was like, your secondary is solid, maybe even good, but it's nothing special. It's mm-hmm. nothing special because if it was something special, you guys would have created some turnovers in the secondary. You wouldn't have gotten outrun by – Roman Wilson and Tyler Morris. Your secondary is just, if you're going to have a weakness on your team, it is your secondary. And again, Michigan's running game eventually bulldozed you over late in the game. But I mean, you were, in my opinion, you were, you were tired and you were going on the field for two straight possessions. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, it was, that was just surprising. Um, game. So Samaj Morgan, the guy who fumbled that first punt mm-hmm. game was a little too big for him. The freshman. He's a true freshman. That was a bad fumble. <laughs> Terrible fumble. Terrible fumble. <laughs> Man, he also was... dropped the key pass. But, you know, the fumble led to Alabama's first touchdown. Yeah. And, I mean, you know what? I'll tell you something else. I said uh, in our little pregame show, I said for out for Michigan to win this game, they're going to have to win the turnover battle. I even went as far as to say I think they're going to have to win it by two. 
I think they're going to have to win the turnoff battle, turnover battle by two to win the game. Mm-hmm. And they didn't win the turnover battle at all. It I was, think it was, it was even, it, it one was to even. one, right? It was, it was one and one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Tyler Morris and Roman Wilson, though, they more than stepped up to offset uh, Samaj Morgan just – he just wasn't ready for this. He really wasn't. Yeah. But what was pretty amazing and allowed Michigan to be aggressive was their secondary, the best secondary in college football. Um, if there's, you know, I would say Ohio State's is close, but Michigan's is better because their safeties are better. Um, yeah, I just wanted everybody to see our, our new little outline there. We'll come right back to the other look, but there, there's our new outline, folks. But I guess we're going to go with this look. You tell us which one do you like? If you're still, if if you're watching, yeah, everybody. Which one do you like? Do you, like, the, do you, do you, like, do you like this one? Do you like this one with the Buckeye background? I know there's going to be a lot of you Michigan guys watching to uh, this one, so you'll probably say you don't like the Buckeye background. But which which one do you guys like better? Tell us. Let us know. Yeah, Up let close us know in the, the comments or the, below or the, or, the, or the far away. But anyhow, go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. Yeah. So secondary. Will Johnson, mm-hmm. Mike Sainer, still mm-hmm. Josh Wallace and Rod Moore just yeah. shut down Alabama's receivers. They did. I knew they could, and they did. Yeah. They mixed up. And again, the defensive scheme was amazing. Just, uh, just you couldn't have asked for a better one. Mixing yeah. up zone and man very well all game. Man, Alabama took, I think it was in the second quarter, they had enough time, and they did go deep a couple times. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I, I remember one time specifically, um, uh, I believe it was actually the second quarter as well. I looked pre-snap and I was like, okay, Michigan's back in cover two. And I see Milrow wind up to go deep. And, you know, the, the camera angle was not to where you could necessarily see what was mm-hmm. going on in the secondary, but I knew they were in cover two. And so as he, as he wound up to go deep, I was thinking, surely there's a safety coming over the top. And sure enough, that safety came over and closed it off. And I mean, there was nothing there. They just completely took it away. So that was Rod Moore. I, I don't know what Milrow was doing, taking that shot in cover two. They stayed in cover two the next snap and Milrow checked down to the, to the guy over here, kind of like on, you know, towards the sideline, you know, and got five or six yards. I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of more times than not, that's one of your only options in cover two. If you've got a deep route plan, like you're probably just not going to hit the deep ball. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you got to hit it in the middle of the field. That's where cover two is. Weak. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be a seam or, 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 you know, like a level, like a type. post post yeah, yeah. to the middle of the field. Yeah. Um, so anywho, uh, well, I mean, again, Alabama did try going deep and Alabama fans, you hit on those against all of your SEC brethren, mm-hmm. but this big 10 team shut you guys down. Yeah. They ran with you and you couldn't get past them. So yeah, Michigan, if anything, they were the faster team as well. I mean, they had, I mean, they had the most explosive plays outside of that one run that Alabama had. I mean, Milrow had some Decent runs, but nothing that was like earth shattering. And yes, Alabama yeah. fans, I am saying it again. Milrow is not a home run hitter. He's got good speed, but he's not, he doesn't have great speed. If he had great speed, he would have broken off longer runs than he did. And I continue to stick by that. The uh the Big Ten team in this case was uh the faster just more physical team. I don't give a fuck what his 40 time is. I care about what I see on a football field. And what I see on a football field is, yeah, he's a fast player, but he's not a burner. He's not Vince Young. Mm -mm. He is not Vince Young. So stop it. He is not Vince Young. Vince Young was like one of a freaking kind. No. Jalen Milrow ain't that, guys. He ain't. You know, consolation, Bama fans, uh, we are enjoying this on your expense if you're watching. Uh, And I, I will admit that freely. And you've enjoyed. I'm quite- living vicariously through Michigan, but I don't give yeah, a fuck yeah. because I'm you, a Big Ten fan. You, you, you've enjoyed a lot at the expense of uh, Ohio State and and the Big Ten through the years, and mm-hmm. I'm enjoying this at your expense. Oh, I, no, I, 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 go watch the <laughs> SEC Network with Paul Feinbaum's freaking inbred ass. No, actually, I like Paul Feinbaum. But again, when Michigan State got blown out by Alabama mm-hmm. in 2015, the first thing they said was, "Oh, looks like the Big Ten wasn't very good." Or it looks like they were overrated and stuff. When it was clear Ohio State was the best team in the Big Ten, they just had a terrible, like one of the worst games called ever. And they would have probably given Alabama all they wanted in 2015. But but they just held on to just ripping on the Big Ten. Great, great example of the committee getting it wrong. Uh, You know, I mean, the, the, the 2015 Ohio State absolutely was deserving to be one of the four best teams since that's the criteria all of the sudden, you know. 
not yeah. the most deserving, the four best. I mean, you know, Ohio State 2015 was one of the four best. Ohio State 2016 was not one of the four best. You know, so the wrong team for the Buckeyes got in in the urban area. But anyway. well, I'll tell you, I tell you what, speaking of like all that deserving and stuff, and I know Florida State just got absolutely freaking like just gone it like like Georgia went in dry mm-hmm. on them and like freaking just beat the shit out of them. But I will yeah. say this. It is good that Alabama also lost because of that. Because like if Alabama would have gone on and won the national championship, it was just you know that would obviously would have sucked because the SEC would have won again. But I mean, like it's it's good that I guess Florida State had some kind of like just uh, I don't know optimism that you know the team that got in over them yeah. lost. You know what? You know what? A few SEC fans were texting me today. They said, well, Georgia was really the best team in the SEC. You know, Georgia Georgia would have beat Michigan. And I told them, I said, I said, you know what? You know where you can take that? You can take it and you can shove it right back up your ass because yeah, Alabama, Alabama beat Georgia fair and square on the field, out-physicaled them, outplayed them, won the line of scrimmage, and then Michigan just did the same thing to Alabama. So don't give me that crap. Beat them Georgia. in a home game in Atlanta because yeah, let's be real. Anytime exactly. Georgia plays in Atlanta, it's a home game for them. Exactly. It is. It is yeah. absolutely a fucking home game. Yeah. And they, they could be playing anybody in the SEC and it's a home game for them. So and you SEC, know, I heard SEC fans save that crap about Georgia being the best team. Georgia got their butts beat by Alabama and Michigan beat Alabama. Period. End of story. Take your medicine and stop whining. You know, some commentator from the Ohio State beat tried to say that today that Alabama was the fifth best team in the SEC. What an idiot. Who, who is this? Just, just, say, just say his name. Anybody that stupid deserves No, I'm not going to say his name because then, it, you know, it is what it is. People can do the math. But I was like, what the fuck is Can you tell his drugs? affiliation? What, 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 what group is he with? The, uh, that OSU, the podcast, Homerism. Mm. Which, by the way, they had a podcast today. And, you know, I like to listen. I mean, they're not a competitor with us. We don't compete with them. Let's be real. We do not compete with them. No. But at the same time, our podcast exists because of trash that they freaking put out. (laughs) That's why. Um, They were trying to say, like, Ohio State did well against Missouri and they should keep their heads up and stuff like that. And I'm like, good God, these people are on drugs. They have to be. They have to be on drugs. There's no other way that they could have these thoughts. I tell you what, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad that at least at Bucknuts, I'm glad that Dave Biddle was willing to at least say the quiet part out loud and and just say that that this is unacceptable and that there's big problems in the Ryan Day administration. I'm glad that at least Dave Biddle was willing to to come out and say that. I don't read Bucknuts articles because they all suck. Well, he he said that on the podcast. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anywho, Michigan's coaching staff continuing on with this game. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. They're basically an NFL coaching staff. They're an mm-hmm. NFL coaching staff that is coaching in college. Well, that's Horrible. what, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's what was so obvious is like, it was like, man, this coaching staff is so much better than the coaching staff that Ryan days put together. And we're not going to, in this, uh, in this, we're not going to, you know, rehash the horrendousness of the staff that Ryan Day has. I'm sure. Okay. Well, they're the best coaching staff in college yeah. football. They yeah. are the absolute best coaching staff in college. They outcoach Nick Saban. Yeah, I would say that. I mean, you know, I would think like Alabama's and Georgia's are close, but I just think that they get. I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's like. They're so much more talented than Michigan, at least recruiting rankings wise. So it's like Michigan's getting it this done with like the 14th most talented team in the 247 composite. Yeah. Versus these other teams that are in like the top three in the composite. I mean, one to put, being Ohio State, the other being Alabama, who was number one. To put that in perspective, how impressive that is. I believe that, that my number could be a little bit wrong. I'm going from memory. But Clemson is the lowest rated 247 composite Mm -hmm. team to win a national championship in the playoff area. And I believe they were seventh or eighth, somewhere, somewhere right in there. That's the lowest that's ever won a national championship 
in the playoff era is like seven. I'll have to look. I think they were lower than that, Michael. Were they lower than that? I think they were. But they weren't out of the top 10, were they? They might have been. They weren't 14th, were they? No, I don't think they were that low. I mean, but Michigan, I think it's this possible is definitely the, the lowest 10. talent composite that's ever won a playoff game and gone to the national championship. No, that's incorrect. Who? It's Washington. Well, yes, but Washington, well, yes, but, uh, okay, let me rephrase yeah. that. The lowest talent composite to beat an SEC team in the playoffs. Okay, yes, that yes. is true. That is yes. true. Well, if you want to call Texas now an SEC team. but well, they're, they're, still they're still Big, the Big 12. 12. They're still Big 12. If, yeah. if, if, if that's, why, that's why the Wolverines have to finish the job, because even though the Huskies will be in the Big Ten this year, they're not in the Big Ten. I mean, Big Ten next year, they're not in the Big Ten this year. So Don't worry, but, everybody. We're going to do a national championship preview. Yeah. Don't you worry. Yeah. We're going to break that guy. I can't speak on behalf of how that game's going to go yet because I haven't looked at the film. I need to really study Washington. Um, but I will say this, my early feeling is Michigan's a better team than Washington, but before we get to that game, continuing on, um, NFL, NFL coaching staff, Michigan has, I mean, let's be real. Harbaugh is a former NFL head coach. Jesse Minner was in the NFL as a DB coach and assistant, mm -hmm. um, both sides of the ball. They did exactly what I said they needed to do to win. I just didn't think they would. And that's what, again, I said, if they do this, I think Michigan's going to win. But mm -hmm. I had no reason to believe that they would. Like Harbaugh has historically coached so bad in bowl games. It's like Michigan has always been like a completely different team in the wrong way in bowl games. So history, like, you know, I'm not going against the history. Like Michigan has always just been so ill-prepared in bowl games. I don't know why. But, you know, starting on offense, you know, one of the things that they did, they ran a lot of power but with some also some misdirection and they did use Alex orgy. Some, I was like, Alex orgy is going to be the key. He really wasn't the key, but they did use him and gave Alabama something to think about. Michael. Mm -hmm. Did, did you, um, did, did you notice that, um, you know, there was nothing timid. There was nothing scared about the way Michigan approached this game. Like they were approaching their coaching staff was approaching this game to win it. And then after the game, I noticed the way that the players were interacting with the coaches mm -hmm. and the way that the, the, the all of that, that there is a distinctive difference. And I get it. Okay. Jim Harbaugh, he's kind of a weird guy. All right. I mean, that's just the bottom. He is. Line. He is like, a weird he's, guy. He's but a he's little a bit hell of, a, of a coach. He's a little bit of a weird guy, but he has figured out how to create a culture there that far surpasses what Ryan Day has figured out how to create at Ohio State. You know, Jim Harbaugh has figured out how to continue to build a winning culture and camaraderie, and Ryan Day. Uh, under the umbrella of brotherhood and camaraderie and, you know, love conquers all and, you know, the summer of love and all this crap uh, has eroded the culture slowly. And so, I mean, Michigan right now, um, I hate to say it, but um, on this podcast, we will call it how we see it. Michigan has a better culture than Ohio state at this given time. It's not even a comparison. Yeah. I don't even know what culture Ohio State even has, but like <laughs> Michigan, speaking of culture, like, you know, their culture is all just, they love each other, man. That team, they yeah. love each other, man. They yeah. are in it together. Like, what did Bo Schembechler say? It's like the team, the, the team, team, the, the team. team, the team. Yeah. And he's absolutely right. And Michigan fans, right, I yeah. will say this also Bo Schembechler may be the most overrated college football coach of all time. <laughs> <laughs> why 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 is Bush and Becker to, okay explain that statement well why? number one he never won a national championship <laughs> no he came in second that was like the best he did right yeah and then number two <laughs> he always would get blown out in the freaking rose bowl man like all the time like again like even like ohio state a lot of times would fight valiantly in the rose bowl michigan just went out there and got their asses kicked like how am i ever going to call this guy an elite coach if all he ever does is lose 
to the Pac-10 in the freaking Rose Bowl and get blown out and never won a national championship. I'm just not going to call that guy one of the best coaches of all time. I'm not going to do it. Did you hear what Harbaugh said before the game? Uh, talk, which they, time? Well, he's being interviewed. And they said um, they were talking to him about growing up, a coach's son, and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, it was Michigan and it was, it was, you know, November and, and December. And it was like, you know, dad, we want to go on a vacation. And like, they knew there was one way that they went on a vacation and that was for Michigan to go to the Rose bowl. (laughs) 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 And he said, you know, it would be like, uh, you know, October, November, and, you know, they hadn't been on a vacation all year, and they're like, Dad, you know, we want to go on a vacation. And he mm-hmm. looked at him, and he'd be like, oh, you guys want to go on a vacation? All right, well, let's get in the car. And he said they'd drive around Ann Arbor, and he'd take them to, you know, he'd show them the ice cream shop, and he'd show them, you know, the different sites in Ann Arbor, and he'd take them back home, and he said, there's your vacation. <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's what you're getting. So, um, you know, it, it, as much as I, I, I'm not, you know, going to be like have the warm and fuzzies for for Jim or, or, or you know, if if that was his childhood and that's what he grew up, you know, I got to feel kind of uh, good for him to be able to, you know, get a win like that against the Kings of college football at the Rose Bowl, a place that, you know, was so special to the Big Ten in general. And then, you know. Uh, of course, every individual program that gets to play there specifically has their special memories of the Rose Bowl. Hmm. No, for sure. Um, you know, I just actually thought of something funny when I was thinking about um, the Michigan's backup quarterback, Alex Orgy. Can you imagine later in life, Alex Orgy is like an older dude and he has like a house party mm-hmm. and he has like, you know, whatever house party. Let's say he's in his 30s and 40s, has a house party. And um, let's say like, you know, some people come to his door and they're like, like half naked. And they're like, oh, here, we're here for the orgy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, Can you well, imagine that fucking happening? Because I could believe that. I could absolutely believe like some swingers come over and they see Alex or, you know, orgy. Like, oh, we're here for the orgy party. The word got out that there was an orgy party. Yeah. Or, orgy the orgy party. They're they're having like, a party yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah. We're yeah. here for the orgy party. And then they're like, right. it's like regular people dress, however. And right. like these na- people are there, like about right. to strip freaking right. naked and yeah. ready to fuck or something. Yeah, yeah. You got the but, wrong. I- you got the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. I c- I could honestly see that happening with how yeah. stupid some people are. Yeah. Um. Well, Jay. I mean, what 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 else do you have? I mean, I'm Michigan. I'm happy for you. Okay. Well, uh, on defense, like no. again, uh, schematically on defense, they also did exactly what I wanted to do, and what I wanted them to do. And that mm-hmm. is they brought pressure all game and did not let up. Michael, I said, and it. I was that, like, yeah. Michigan is going to need to bring pressure because here's the thing. I said this before and it's kind of goes against conventional wisdom when it comes to mobile quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. So when you have a mobile quarterback, conventional wisdom says you're only going to rush three or four maximum. You're going to try and keep him in the pocket and just give him time, but just make sure he doesn't beat you with his feet. Right. Well, I, I've always been against that because when you give mobile quarterbacks time to throw, what are you also giving them? Time, time to scramble if they need time to, to scramble and time to run mm-hmm. and look downfield and also make plays with their legs. Mm-hmm. So Michigan did the opposite of that. And I mm-hmm. was like, I would never let a mobile quarterback sit back there, especially one that doesn't throw very well. Mm hmm. Bring four, bring five or six every single play and make him beat you with hot routes and precision accuracy against tight coverage. And the guy really cannot do it. And Michigan yeah. made sure that they they blitzed him, but they blitzed him with leverage as well. He never once got away. He never outran any of them. Like I said, he's not that fucking fast. Yeah. If he were, he would have broken a couple 30 or 40 yard runs. I don't think he had a run past like 20 yards. I think he had that one run in like the fourth quarter, but he didn't really outrun anybody. Right. Yeah. See, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, the the Eagles were against Patrick Mahomes. They were using a a conservative approach where they -hmm. were plugging their gaps and the defensive ends were coming up field, but they were not, they were not turning the corner and creating that, that room for Patrick Mm -hmm. Mahomes to get loose. Now they were just coming up field and boxing to them. Now, Patrick Mahomes, 
is not a crazy athlete, contrary to popular belief. Do you know what he ran the 40 in in the combine? Didn't he run like a four eight or something? Yeah, it was like a four four eight three or four eight mm -hmm. six, something some, something like that. Which is so, still actually really fast, people. By the way, if you run like under five as a normal person, you're really freaking moving. Yeah, but in the yeah. NFL, that's slow. Yeah, that's not extremely fast, you know. And it, you know, for the NFL, but I, you know, uh, uh, so that that strategy really worked against Patrick Mahomes because he couldn't get the edge. You know, when they had mm -hmm. boxed him in, he was struggling to get the edge that night, and they were chopping him down. I think Milrow is faster than that. I think Milrow is probably a four six type of runner. Um, you know, four six. Well, five. Alabama say he's a four three, but I tell well, you, well, that's that's bullcrap. So I mean, yeah. when, when he goes to the combine, we'll find out he's like a four five nine or a four six three or four six five. I don't know. I don't. And again, it doesn't really matter what he runs at the combine. All no. I care about was what he looks like on the football field because I've seen guys run really good forty times, but it doesn't really translate to football speed. He's a fast, he's a fast, explosive player. I'm not going to take that away from him. He's, he's a really, fast. I'm just saying he's not that fast. No, no. I mean, I don't think he's a four, four guy. I think that's no, the again, I think, I think here, that's here's all, the thing. I Alabama fans, I can acknowledge a guy is fast, but when I say somebody is like a speedster and Ohio state fans will know this, I'm talking about people that are like Ted Ginn, Chris Johnson, Joey Galloway players that outrun angles. Jalen Milrow does not run outrun angles. He didn't against Michigan, at least. Terrell, Terrell Pryor was a quarterback that could outrun angles. Terrell Pryor was a quarterback that had such a fast start. He could get from zero to top speed really fast. And so that that gave him a real escapability. I don't know. And plus, he ran a 4.39 in the 40. I mean, so he could just... Well, fly. that was that was not uh, laser time. So I don't know what his 40 is. But Terrell Pryor was probably faster than Milrow. I'd say yeah. their speed was comparable. I would say Pryor definitely had a slight edge. He was a little bit bigger than Milrow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he had a longer stride and everything. But, mm -hmm. I mean, Terrell Pryor is a better athlete than Milrow by a lot. Terrell Pryor is one of the best athletes I've ever fucking seen. But, again, Michigan did the right thing, brought pressure all game, made sure that the guy wasn't going to scramble around and beat them like all the other SEC teams let them let them do. Georgia probably kicking themselves but not blitzing as much. But Georgia doesn't have as good of a secondary as Michigan either. They don't. So they just couldn't cover Alabama's receivers the same way Michigan could in one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but, yeah, I just love the scheme, Michael. It could not have been called better. Uh, Jesse Minner is a genius, but he also has so much fucking talent at everywhere. The front seven is so great. Their secondary is great. Their linebackers are long, rangy, and can run. Like they, they can be aggressive because they have the personnel to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and they, they dialed up some, uh, they dialed yeah, up some they, beautiful. They, yeah. They brought it, man. You have to, you have to bring pressure it, against here's, these here was what, The SEC surely does. Here was also something that I, I felt was impressive. And it's kind of my last thought on the, mm -hmm. on the game is um, at, towards the end of the second quarter, Alabama began to adjust to the pressure that Michigan was bringing and whatever, whatever Michigan did at halftime, for the most part, they were able to readjust and continue to give Alabama significant problems in the second half. Uh, I mean, obviously Alabama did um, score 10 points in the second half, but they also scored 10 points in the first half. So, um, and, and the way it was looking it was looking like Alabama was starting to figure out what Michigan was doing towards the end of the first mm -hmm. half. And Michigan was able to adjust and keep Alabama, um, you know, from kind of getting that momentum and, and really starting to roll. And so the result was there was not any roll damn tide. There was uh hail to the victors. No, absolutely. Michael. And again, um, this is just so big. And you know why it's so big, Michael? Why? Because right now, we have a Big Ten versus Pac-10 title. Pac-12, yeah. whatever they are. They're yeah. the Pac-10 in my eyes. Yeah. This, You know, a bookend, considering the first 14 playoff was the same two conferences in the title game, and the last uh, national championship of the 14 playoff era is the same exact thing. Yep. Big 10 versus Pac-10. So yep. uh, I enjoy that a lot. And these are two teams that are going to, I mean, obviously no Michigan is, but Washington's going to be in the Big 10 next year. So, yeah, so, you know, we can like change our narrative and say, hey, the Big 10 is 
it's a Big Ten versus Big Ten national championship game. Is how we could look at it and paint that narrative. And people really can't say we're too wrong either. I, I yeah, I mean, I get it. I and I agree. And I am still rooting for the 2023 Big Ten team to win it so that it's a definitive. Oh, yeah. Michigan fans are still cheering for you, and we're so gonna do a, a breakdown of that game. So this is a definitive Big Ten title, but the SEC and any connection to the SEC is completely erased from the 2023 national championship. And either way the game goes the 2024 defending national champion will be a member of the big 10 conference. Absolutely, man. I like the sound of that. I, I actually, no, I don't like the sound of that. I love the sound of that because can you imagine if Alabama and Texas were in the national championship? Oh God. I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't even watch it. I would have fucking gagged. I, I would have like, I would have like vaguely turned it on and, you know, kind of flipped it, you know, I would have cheered for Alabama in that game. I really do not like Texas at all. I don't, yeah, I would have, I would have, I would have cheered for Alabama. I would have cheered for you. I would have cheered for mm -hmm. Nick Saban. I, I respect Nick Saban as the goat, as the greatest, but yeah. um, still, still, I can wet. deal with Alabama winning a national championship. I don't know if I could deal with Texas winning a championship, even yeah. though the Texas team in 2005 was likable. There's really nothing likable about this Texas team. I hated the Texas team in 2005. Well, I hated that Ohio state choked and lost to them, but that was yeah. on, that was on that two quarterback system. And Jim Trestle, man, just was too conservative in that game. Mm. That was like par for the course for Trestle. But uh, yeah, right now we have two big 10 teams and uh, we're going to have a preview for you guys later in the week for that. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out, Michael. We'll figure out when we're going to get, we got, we got two, we got two weeks. We want to get our research down. I want to look more. No, we have like less than six days, bro. Oh, it's only there. Yeah. It's on January 8th. Oh, they're not doing the two week thing anymore. No, they have a week. In, they have a week until that game. All right. Well, we'll figure so we're it out. Gonna get, we're going to get on it for you people. Don't you worry. We're going to film it and get it out to you. It'll but, uh, Oh yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, I don't really have anything else, though, sir. That's so um, happy for the Big Ten. Yeah, um, we needed it in the worst way. Definitely had to offset the momentum of the SEC. Even though the SEC finished with the four and two record against the Big Ten, the Big Ten won the most important game. And uh, even though the SEC won those games, I mean, there are opt outs on you know both sides for all of those teams, so it's really hard to judge. But the games do count. I'm not saying the games don't count. They absolutely do count. And I don't believe in opt-outs. I think it's terrible. It's terrible for the game. And we're probably going to do a podcast on our thoughts on that more in depth, probably in the off season. Yeah, ab absolutely. And so um, plenty to cover this off season, but in the meantime, we will, uh, we will be looking forward to that national championship preview. And uh, hopefully the big 10 can go all the way. Absolutely. All right. Everybody, thank you. See ya. Congratulations, Michigan, Michigan fans. Uh, thank you for representing for the Big Ten, and we will be back soon. See ya, everybody. We're out.